I'll be real with y'all. Nothing will humble you faster than a failed craft project. <laughs> hey there, it's Mr. Larry, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Larry. I'm here to guide you through yet another crafting journey. This time, one that I have very little experience with. Epoxy resin is really popular. There are a lot of artists and makers and crafters all over the internet using this product to make wonderful pieces of jewelry, uh, accessories of all kinds, and beautiful works of art. I've dabbled in this just a tiny bit with mixed success. I think we'll be able to find our way through it together. I hope you guys enjoy my new festive apron. I'm actually gonna show you all how to make your own customized apron very soon. Of course, they won't be exactly like mine, but I will show you how to infuse it with some extra color and personality and some details that you might enjoy. So stay tuned for that. And if you've been missing out on your regularly scheduled Mr. Larry videos, check me out on Instagram where I'm posting videos pretty much every day. Follow me there at Mr. Larry. Make sure that you're subscribed here on YouTube as well and hit the bell button for notifications on all my latest and greatest projects. <laughs> I'll be sharing with you three bits of information that'll help make our project go smoothly and give us some background, starting with thing number one. In science, science. In science, resin is a solid or highly viscous substance of plant or synthetic origin, and it's usually converted into natural polymers like silk and rubber and amber, as well as synthetic ones like plastics and neoprene. Epoxy resin, which is used by professionals and hobbyists alike, is suitable for everything from awards and accessories to buttons and bookends. For our introduction today, we'll focus on what I think might be the simplest application of this substance, pouring it into a mold. I know all the resin people are like, uh, it's not that simple, what are you talking about? And that brings us to thing number two. Luckily, epoxy resin is perfect for beginners who want to try at home. It costs just a few dollars to get started, and supplies are increasingly easier to find at your favorite craft store. But the wonders of epoxy resin have been around since the 1930s. Its low cost and durable nature made it an accessible and affordable option. And if you enjoy a thrift shop as much as I do, you've probably glanced upon some resin barrettes or combs or bag handles. The list goes on and on and on, as do the colors, details, and finishes of many resin works. And that brings us to thing number three. Most resin artists work on projects like our coaster set in small, exclusive runs with limited editions. And no matter how precise an artisan is, no two resin pieces are ever exactly the same. Especially when you add glitter and buttons and feathers and beads. I'll also show you what happens when you try to add all that stuff together at one time. <laughs> I have a few different supplies here. I have a couple of different brands of this clear epoxy resin, which is a two-part mix. You mix equal parts of these two substances together, they create the resin, and then all you do is slowly pour it into your vessel, your form, and then allow it to cure for 24 hours or so. I fully expect tips and tricks and information to come in from the comment section, and I welcome it. Now that it's like a total disaster, You'll see. Let's just get into it. <laughs> I picked up these supplies from various places. Um, they include my clear casting resin. I also have an assortment of glitters. I have some glass glitter, which I've not gotten the chance to use yet, but it's so pretty. Um, and then I have some alcohol ink, which we will use to colorize our resin. So we're going to try to create something festive and holiday spirited. I'm gonna put these gloves on, I'm gonna get our workstation set up, and I will bring you with me every step of the way. So I have my two-part epoxy resin here. I also have some sprinkles here that I will be using to incorporate into our resin. I have three different mixes, so we'll make three different coasters using our three different molds. So I'm looking at all my materials here. I may not use everything we have here. In fact, that's part of the problem that I had with my first one. So we'll just see where, we'll see where the spirit of Christmas takes us. <laughs> we have part A, which is a casting resin, and then part B, which is the casting hardener. And we need to make sure that we mix these in equal parts to ensure that our resin sets up properly. Let's check where our measurement is. Oh great, we're almost there. Don't be scared to take your time, especially with your measurements. That is part of my problem from the last time I did this, is I did not measure as carefully as I needed to. Okay. 
so now that these two parts are combined equally, I can pour some into each of my individual sprinkle cups and then we can get our molds ready to go. Let's do this mixture with the stars in it because I think that's my favorite. I'm just trying to take my time with all the stirring and stuff because that's how you create the air bubbles. I'm gonna let that sit for just a moment and I'm gonna go ahead and prepare our other one. I'm using actual food sprinkles. There are lots of plastic and rubber sprinkles and different kinds of details you can add to your resin available that are not food. Give it a try and let me know what your results are. Look at how festive. Now I have alcohol ink here that we could use in our resin. I think I'm opting not to because I think the sprinkles and the glitter are just gonna shine a little bit brighter without any color in the resin. Now I wanna give this one more stir, and then all I'm gonna do is pour this into our prepared mold. All right, y'all, here it is. Yeah, definitely more resin. Make sure that my sprinkles are evenly distributed around the mold. I'm gonna go ahead and top this off with a little bit more resin. Oh, look at our gold stars. Gold star for you. And just top it off. And I don't want to overfill it. So I'm going to be very careful. There are some air bubbles rising up, but I think those will all probably go away on their own. So I'm not going to touch them. Slide this out of the way. Slide through. Now, as these begin to cure, the things I will be looking for are floating elements like sprinkles and glitters that might need to be pushed down gently as we um, still have time in our process. And then any air bubbles that seem like they're not going away on their own, I will go through with a needle and try popping some of those. I will continue to check on these for the next day and let them cure for at least 24 hours. I'm gonna go for the full day and then um, check on them then. Y'all, let's talk about failure. <laughs> let's talk about this journey I have been on the last week. So first I wanna share with you my three original resin pours, which used these wooden coaster forms. The coasters were intended to be filled with resin and whatever other things you like, and then they would set and they would make these beautiful coasters. Well, I threw sort of the whole kitchen sink in there. I have glitter, I have buttons, I had some alcohol ink and some um, metallic alcohol ink as well. And I really thought, this would be a really beautiful array of like holiday cheer. And it ended up being a big nightmare. The biggest mistakes I made with this draft is that I did not mix equal portions of my resin to start with because I sort of eyeballed it and I thought it would be fine. And then I did not stir it nearly enough. The biggest mistake I think here aside from that, was that I poured the, or I dripped the alcohol ink directly into the wood and then intended to mix it with the resin to sort of get like a painterly effect where there'd be spots that were colorful, spots that were sort of clear. I thought I could do all of that. And that is not the case. And the wood soaked up the ink rapidly. And so now you have ink coming out the sides. It did the same with the resin though. I don't think these were intended for the casting resin that I used because it kind of ran out the edges a little bit and it just doesn't, it's, this is a mess. Okay, they're sticky. Some of them are sticky. That one's sticky. Um, this one's the most normal <laughs> somehow. It actually cured. This is probably the worst <laughs> I've ever failed in a project. Here are three different coasters that I created after, and then I 
just sort of tried to readdress some of the mistakes that I thought I made the first place. I mixed it with accurate portions, so exactly half and half. I stirred it for what I thought was long enough, and then I added in my sprinkles, I poured it very slowly, I tried to maintain the air bubbles and all that sort of stuff, and then I waited. I waited overnight, I waited two days, I waited, now it's been, I wanna say four days for these. This one has not cured. You know, it, it, it tried, <laughs> it really tried, but this is not going to work out, unfortunately. This one has the same problem, it's just completely liquid on top. Um, I do think it cured in the bottom a little, which is kind of sad. Okay, so we have, a bottom half that is, oh, Dios mío, look at this, y'all. Look at that, though. Look, a coaster, a half a coaster. This looks like, <laughs> this, is, this looks like one of those Jell-O um, salads from the 50s. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Salad? <laughs> This last one, the problem here is that it's still soft. It's almost got the consistency of like a starburst or something. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is so ugly. I mean, it's so beautiful, but it's also like, this is not what it was meant to be at all. Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> the next two that I'll show you are almost exactly what they were meant to be, but they still have problems that you can prevent. For one, I still have a little bit of a problem area here on the back. I introduced more resin after I poured it. That resin was not mixed the same as the resin before. And so the ratio must have been off or something. And so now I've got sort of a divot here and it goes pretty deep, but I am happy to see at least a glimmer of what should be happening. Look at this beautifulness. So this is what I'm calling my Sailor Moon coaster. <laughs> it's very clear. I don't have any clouding or anything. I just put a little bit of, of glitter in there to add some shimmer and that came out really nice. So overall, I am very happy with this one. Um, I did not have any issues with spots or anything like that. So yay, success number one. Here is number two. I tried yet again our Christmas coaster idea because I really believe in it. You guys, look at that shine. Look at that crystal clear quality. That shows that you can do it. It might take a little struggle. You know, a lot of struggle even, but we can get there. I used a little tiny dab of green and it just exploded in this resin. It's so bright and pretty. And I love it. I want to do a whole series in this color now. It like glows. So just as I was giving up on this project, one of my beautiful angelic followers came through and gifted me some more supplies, which I was in need of. So that gave me just the extra push I needed to try it one more time and see if I could really get it right. There were some very basic things that I paid extra attention to this time around, including the measurements of my liquids and then how long I mixed them for, which was three to five minutes, as opposed to one to two, like I did earlier. I made sure to mix everything thoroughly and scrape the sides of my cups. I then transferred my mixture to a fresh cup to prevent any additional issue with spots of the resin, not mixing properly, all those things that we had happen. I also paid very close attention to the location that I set my resin in to set and making sure that the temperature was right. And then I left it alone for 24 hours. <sighs> Let me tell y'all something. Nothing will humble you faster than a failed craft project. <laughs> um, this was definitely an experience filled with trials and tribulations. I'll be real with y'all. I gave up on this project. It came to a point where I was just like, nothing I do is working. I'm doing all the things correctly. Obviously that's not the case. I took a lot of shortcuts here and there. Things that I didn't realize were shortcuts, to be honest, but there is a precision that's required to be successful at making these resin pieces. 
And so I'm gonna give you my biggest tips learned from tried and true experience <laughs> over the last week, and they are as follows. Number one, make sure that your measurements are accurate. accurate. You can use a scale or you can use cups that have you know little markings in them. If your measurements are off, it won't set up. It just can't. Accurate. Thing number two, obviously don't try to add too much right away, especially as you're learning this process. Take it slow, no harm in that. In fact, it will be helpful to you. And keep in mind that sometimes additives like alcohol inks or other dyes and things that are not added in the appropriate quantity can also uh, prohibit the resin from setting up. My next tip, mixing resin takes a little bit longer than you might expect. You need to mix it together for three to five minutes. The first time I did this, I mixed it maybe a minute. No, three to five actual minutes. Because if you are mixing and you still see streaks and you know you can tell that there are two separate things being mixed together in the cup, it's not gonna work out. So you have to make sure that you get it mixed really well, get those two things fully incorporated, and as you continue to mix, it's a good idea to switch to a different cup so that you can prevent excess liquid from the edges of your cup, for instance, being dripped into your already mixed solution. That's how you end up with soft spots and puddles and little bits of things like hardener seeping out on their own. It's because they weren't fully incorporated. Three to five minutes, pour it into another cup, mix it again, then add whatever you'd like to add, color, glitter, etc., sprinkles, and then you should be good to go from there. If you need to top off your resin, my advice is don't. <laughs> It is much better for you to mix too much resin than you'll need than to try and mix additional resin and add that in. I had this problem with a couple of my pores, and so what I ended up with were two different resin mixtures that didn't meet up together. And so I had some soft spots, I had some that were completely liquid, and that's no good. My next tip is just make sure that you have your patience in check. As you get to know the process a little bit better, everything will come more naturally to you. What's my final tip? Don't give up. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that resin is super easy. It was definitely a learning journey. But if you get the basics in line, give yourself a little bit of space to practice and to try this out, you can find success pretty easily. Just make sure that you get those basics. <sighs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's been a long week. I definitely wanna continue this journey and try some new projects. I will definitely bring you guys along for that ride and let you know when those projects are coming. I hope that today wasn't too stressful for you all. <laughs> I tried to keep it in here. Um, but hopefully you get to see all this and, and watch me go through these things so that you don't have to. If you give a resin project a try, let me know in the comments or follow me over on Instagram or TikTok at Mr.Larry and let me know how it's going. Stay safe, stay crafty, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.